Good evening to the hello all guys this is another episode of the advanced sfml game series and in this video we are going to implement the jumping functionality for mario so jumping is actually remarkably simple just takes two line of code so what you can do is just go ahead and check for if the keyboard up key is pressed then we can set the velocity to the negative of jump velocity what this means is that uh, i have created a variable called jump velocity here that i have set to 10 and we'll just set it to negative of that since movement up means negative and uh, that should actually work uh, and setting the velocity directly should cause a jumping effect to appear now that works but uh, the problem here is that uh, we don't just want the uh, you know player to jump whenever he likes instead what should happen is that uh, mario should only be allowed to jump if he's on ground so if i were to run this right now just uh, run this you can see it should uh, compile and what you should see is that we can actually jump even if we are in air which means we can kind of keep jumping infinitely but we only want jumping to be allowed if mario is standing on the ground so the way we'll do that is uh, well uh, let's get to that in a second so you can see we have got mario here and if i press the up key i did jump and uh, yes it works but i can jump again in the air and i can actually keep jumping and uh, like continuously press the button and that should cause me to like kind of fly around this uh, it should not happen if we should only be allowed to jump if we are standing on the ground so how are we going to exactly do that well we can do that by determining a some way to actually know when we are on the ground and when we are not on the ground so the way we will do that is uh, by well of course we want to actually create so right now if we just test for collisions then mario hits the ceiling that would mean he's kind of jumping so that's of course not right so what we want to do is we only want to test for the lower part of if the actual lower part of mario's body touches this and uh, you might create a separate fixture for this but we don't need to do that since we actually already have a separate fixture here so you can see we have got circle shape dot m underscore p dot set we have got here and we are setting it to the negative 0 0.5 which means it's going to cover the lower part of mario's body which means this is going to be effectively what we want to be testing against now uh, we can do that however this can cause some problems because uh, uh, sometimes this circle shape might be too large and might allow mario to jump for places he cannot if you feel that that's not right what you can do is just create like another fixture here or if you feel that this is working fine then you can just use this fixture that's a decision i'm leaving up to you so uh, for this video I'm just going to use this circle shape I'm going to just uh, set some way to actually use the, uh, determine when this fixture hits the ground so what how do we do that well to do that we can use something called collision listeners what a collision listener is is basically just something that listens to collisions and when a collision happens it will uh, basically just go ahead and uh, uh, you know inform whatever object that caused the collision but the problem with this is that that uh, uh, it just doesn't like work uh, in a simple manner because uh, of course while we do have a circle shape here and we are setting it um, but uh, we don't actually when we are setting up the collision listener in the physics.cpp file uh, the global collision listener we won't actually know if uh, this circle shape uh, corresponds to which object so in order to do that every physics engine has got a field called user data in which we can basically set a pointer to some kind of data that uh, we want to be holding and uh, if you open up mm, the fixture here so fixture definition we have got that so what we can do is we can go under fixture definition for example fixture def and we can say dot user data and we can set this user data so if i go ahead and uh, for example mm, right click on this and uh, just go to pick definition for example or actually let's just open the definition up you can see that it's basically set to b2 fixture user data now uh, you can see that uh, this is a struct right now and uh, if i were to right click on this and open its definition you can see all it contains basically is uh, uh, like a u in ptr underscore t called pointer and uh, it's that and you can see that uh, we can define it to inject whatever data we want in b2 fixture or we have got basically a pointer variable here so 
uh, what can we can do is we can use this pointer variable or we can define uh, we can change this maybe to kind of contain some other data or I guess but uh, what we are going to do is uh, uh, we are basically going to use this pointer variable to set something here and then we'll use that now this actually is set in b2 underscore settings so what this means is that uh, we are allowed to freely modify it since this is a settings thing but uh, uh, we are not going to modify that but just use the default pointer and uh, uh, the way that will work is that uh we'll use that pointer to kind of uh, check whatever we want so we can go ahead and say user data dot pointer and we can set it to whatever we want so uh, the point uh, what we can do is uh, now the problem is that we might have a bunch of different kinds of user data what we are going to do is uh, uh, we are just going to create for example a class here called collision listener so let's just create a class and we can create a LL actually not that way so what the basic idea is that we will create a class called for example collision listener and what that class will do is it will well basically listen for collision it will have two events and the user data will contain a pointer to this class and uh, depending on what happens in the global event listener we'll just call the appropriate method on this class so let's get started implementing that so i have renamed the collision listener to contact listener since uh, that's what box 2d uses so I guess it might be better uh, even though it's um, yeah let's just call it that so in physics.cpp I have included b2 word callbacks and contact.h and uh, we have created a new class here called my global contact listener which inherits from b2 contact listener and uh, we go ahead and call begin contact and end contact here so there are basically two virtual methods and uh, the, uh, it's pretty obvious what they do so what happens is that we can create a contact listener pointer and call it listener uh, for example and we set it to for example contact uh, and we can get the actual contact and we can get fixture a which is the first of these and then we will say get user data and then we will say dot pointer now it won't allow us to assign it directly so we'll need to cast it because uh, uh, well of course we need to cast it because that's just a uint ptr uh, so we need to do that so we are going to check if not listener which means it's null then we will return since it will be null by default so if uh, no listener has been registered we'll just return from here and uh, then uh, we'll call some methods if it's actually right so what we'll do here is we'll create two methods one is on begin contact and one is on end contact and uh, what is this going to contain well currently our methods as you can see contain no uh, basically uh, arguments and uh, we, m we are going to need arguments of course we want to know what we hit and what we did not hit so of course we want to do that but uh, for now let's just uh, leave it at this and we'll add stuff like when we need it so you can see we have got this here and uh, what we can do here is we can just go ahead and call for example listener and we can say uh, on begin contact that's actually pretty much all we need to do and uh, then what we are going to do is we essentially need to basically do all of this again you might want to abstract this into a function since uh, uh, it's going to be generally a lot better if you do it that way but uh, let's just go ahead and set it to get fixture b and basically copy the rest of the code uh, you might want to consider this re uh, to refactor this into a function uh, and uh, that is probably gonna be better so uh, that's something you should do probably do but I'm not going to do that for this video so uh, in here in the end contact we are going to basically do the same thing but uh, on end contact instead so we are going to call on and contact here so like that and uh, you can see we are doing this but this is actually wrong since if the first listener is not registered we won't call the second one so what we will do is we will do if listener then we will do on contact and if not if listener then we'll do on contact for the second one this means if the first one is not uh, registered then we'll call the second one even if it is registered so we want to make sure we do it that way so uh, because we have no guarantees about what order uh, the contact will be in so now let's go ahead and remove that and make it this way and this is going to call the functions correctly here and uh, uh, yes that's that's pretty awesome I guess and uh, of course what we want to do is we want to know what we hit uh, to in order to actually do that and uh, we also want to know uh, what kind of thing we hit maybe we hit a map tile maybe we hit something else and this contact listener is basically providing like like a single contact here and uh, maybe that works but uh, for some things you might want not want a contact listener but some other data for example uh, let, uh, let me give you an example for example for uh, the uh, map 
tiles we not, might not want to have a contact listener but we might want to have some user data telling the position and location of the map and uh, maybe uh, you know stuff like that or maybe we might want to know what object we hit by the name of the object and currently we only have a contact listener which is going to do this on begin contact and end contact but uh, let's just keep it at this to keep things simple for, for now and what we are going to do is with Mario we can make Mario inherit from the contact listener class uh, so uh, to do that I will need to make sure I actually uh, get physics.h from here and go under mario.h and include it here and what we are going to do is um, uh, basically make this mario inherit of course public from uh, contact listener so we will just say contact listener and uh, this uh, has a pure virtual a uh, few for pure virtual so we'll just implement those and uh, let's just remove that and you can see it does implement it and uh, it for example for some reason puts it them as private we don't want that of course we want them to be public so we'll put it uh, here yeah that's that's going to work so now what we can do is we can go ahead and go under mario.cpp for example and uh, you can see that uh, this is pretty much it everything we have got here and uh, uh, we have got our functions implemented so now in order to determine when we are on ground and when not we can say bool on ground uh, or maybe we can call it is grounded for example you can call it of course whatever you want so uh, we will by default set this to false because uh, it should be false by default I guess and now what we are going to do is uh, in main.cpp for example uh, let's just go under on begin contact so in begin contact let's uh, go ahead and set the is grounded to true just without checking anything because right now there's nothing else to collide with in our map except with the actual mario so we'll just do that and uh, now what we can do is we can also call the same thing for end contact but this time we'll do it false so let's let's do that for example and see what happens and uh, what we are going to do is uh, yeah that's pretty much it but of course we need to make sure that we set the user data dot pointer uh, to this so if we just set say this then uh, since this is a uh, contact listener pointer it should work but we are of course going to need to cast this to u int pointer underscore t whatever so let's do that and see what happens so let's run this and see if it works or not so you can see it's compiling it should compile a couple of files really not that much and uh, since Mario inherits from a contact listener, Mario is a contact listener and we should be able to set this using this. Of course you might want to create a separate class called Mario contact listener if you prefer to use composition instead. But uh, let's just do it this way and you can see it jumped and uh, it uh, actually allows me to jump again even if I am doing that. The reason is that of course we never implemented the check. So what we need to do is we go here and uh, uh, make sure that we also check if Mario is grounded. So yeah we need to do that and this uh, hopefully should work so let's just test this out and see what happens uh, and uh, yeah you can see it starts the terminal and uh, uh, actually you can see that even though we are kind of having a contact here you can see Mario is actually not jumping why uh, is the contact not registering or something so you can see that I am trying to move Mario jump Mario but uh, apparently if grounded is uh, being false and it's uh, not being set to true even uh, if uh, this on begin contact is being called so how do we find out if it is actually being called well let's just uh, debug this so uh, let's just go ahead and uh, start debugging we can actually debug it like in the full manner or we can just add a couple of print statements here so let's just go ahead and say something like std colon colon c out and we are going to say something like uh, uh, just say hi for example just to test if this function is being called and let's do that and uh, it's going to give us an error regarding this so let's just go ahead and include io stream and now let's run this and see what happens exactly uh, yeah it should run and you can see it does run and uh, do we get our thing no you can see we do do not get any output what that means is that uh, this function here uh, or whatever this is so we are setting the fixture uh, user data pointer but you can see in here uh, what's happening is that this is not working the reason this is not working is actually kind of uh, really bad which is that we never registered the collision listener so we need to make sure that we actually set the collision listener so in order to do that we can say world dot uh, let's just say contact listener 
contact uh, listener set contact listener so we are going to go ahead and say set contact listener and we are just going to say new my contact uh, my my global contact listener so let's just go ahead and do that and uh, uh, what why is it not working okay so it says that it is an inaccessible base class for some reason even though it is accessible for some reason it's giving that error let's see if the compiler gives the error as well i do not think it should uh, yeah it does give an error because uh, it says that conversion to inaccessible base class b2 contact listener is not allowed well the reason is that we never added public here so yeah that we need to make sure that we actually inherit publicly not like that and if we do that uh, it should hopefully uh, stop giving any errors here and we should be able to run this correctly and let's see uh, you can see that it does not give the uh, see out warning here and uh, it still is not uh, working so even though we do set it to a new global contact listener and when this happens it should automatically get the pointer and uh, write it but for some reason it seems like it is not doing that so what is exactly the problem that's happening here and how can we fix it uh, the reason is actually a pretty simple fix which is that uh, when we are actually doing this we are setting it to when it's negative and negative in our engine means up so we need to set the uh, user data pointer to when it's positive which means we'll set it to the uh, lower one so right now we were making the ceiling the head of mario be what is detecting the ground which is of course wrong so now now if we do that and I run it what you should see is that it works like a charm so uh, we've got everything here so let's just see that I just added these debug statement to find out what happens and you can see it only says one it uh, this uh, question mark one time which means that the box did not have any collision listener assigned to it and that shows to you that our uh, you know uh, the thing that we implemented with the null detection works and if I were to jump Mario you can see Mario does jump and uh, he does not jump so like we have got this right now and if Mario uh, if I just keep pressing the button Mario keeps jumping as long as I keep pressing the button and if I go ahead and stand on this I can jump again and I'm pressing the button but Mario only jumps when he is on that so the problem right now here is that if I for example move to this place uh, I can jump but uh, sometimes it happens that you are standing at an edge of something and you can't jump because uh, of uh, some problems with the uh, capsule basically so sometimes the capsule is not the very ideal shape to do this uh, you might want to just implement uh, not a capsule but uh, some kind of uh, for example scare here you can implement a separate fixture for this and uh, we can make that fixture not have any collisions but instead be just there for the ground checking so yeah maybe if you want we can try that in the next video it's uh, going to be basically something that would uh, not actually det uh, only detect collision but uh, not uh, cause mario to move in any way but uh, this does work for most of the part we can move around and only jump when we are standing on the ground and if we are not standing on the ground we cannot jump so yeah that works pretty awesome so that is pretty much it for this video i'll see you in the next video in which we'll uh, add more stuff to our game so uh, like we'll try to implement uh, different kind of uh, we'll implement animations and a bunch of other stuff so stay tuned for that i'll see you in the next one make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people who want to learn sfml and c plus plus and game development in general and i'll see you in the next one and bye